welcome to The Horror Hangout, a podcast where film fans watch the best and worst horror movies of all time and talk about them. My name is Ben Errington, and today I'm joined by regular co-host, Mr. Andy Conduit Turner. Hello, Ben. Nice to be back, isn't it? It is nice to be back. It's nice to have you back. I'm glad you're back. But we've also got a special guest. It's Philip Escott. He's a filmmaker, production manager at Second Sight Films and director of the documentary Generation Terror. Welcome to the show, Phil. Hello. Thank you, chaps. Very happy to be here again. Again. Exactly. Welcome. Welcome back. We couldn't think of a better guest for for this particular film, especially with the news has just broken that you're involved in a, well, I say you're involved in, more than involved in, you have made a Blair Witch documentary, a feature-length Blair Witch documentary for the Second Sight um, Blu-ray release, which is coming out on the 11th of November. That's correct, isn't it? It is indeed, sir, yes. And I've also spent many, many, many hours rebuilding the original Blair Witch project twice. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, my God. Yes. I'm intimate with the movie. Very intimate, you'd say. <laughs> very, very intimate. Too intimate, would you say? Have you got to a point where you know it frame by frame, inside out? I do. I know it better than its mother knows it. Or his father's? <laughs> mother and father's? Surely. So yes, I know that movie as well as the creators by this point. Yeah. Surely if there's a mastermind um, specialist subject, you could just go straight in there with the blower. These days I can. Absolutely. Yes. Especially wow. all the deleted scenes, because I've seen everything that was ever shot for that film. So, wow, I have oh secrets, God. boys. You'd be like, bring <laughs> it on, Clive. Do your worst. <laughs> Obviously, you would have been the perfect guest for us covering the Blair Witch Project, but we did that long, long time ago, back in the back in the infancy of this podcast, when we were covering the fifty Empire's top fifty horror movies. That's how we started, um, and we've actually done Blair Witch Two, B- Book of Shadows as well. So that really leaves disappointed us... to miss that one, right? You know what? That could have been a good movie. It could have been a good movie, yeah. <laughs> there's still there's some stuff that's kind of all right. It could have right? been. If it had a chance from the get go, it could have been a good movie. Mm. But the cards were stacked against it. And it and it does feature Golf Girlfriend of Ben Errington's Dreams. Golf Girlfriend of Ben Errington's Dreams. Um Golf Girlfriend smoking a doobie on a on a is she smoking on a gravestone? It's all that's almost she does. Golf. That's how that's how she's introduced, and I think that's the point where the Blair Witch, like some ghosts in a few movies, decide I'm going to frame you for a murder, love. <laughs> you remember it even better than I do, and I feel like I've seen it lots. <laughs> yeah, she's it's in that look- wonderful subgenre of films that I love when ghosts, for some reason, ghosts or sometimes sharks, frame a human for a murder they've committed, even though the <laughs> law holds no. Oh, no the old Jaws for four motif. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> bloody hell uh, uh, yeah so I've, unfortunately that does just leave the 2016 Blair Witch which I think with fans is kind of thought of as like a, I guess an, another opportunity missed usually isn't yeah, it yeah I mean the first is like such a landmark film right so you're never going to beat or live up to that ever you're just not going to I mean you just can't but mm. if you're going to give it to anyone Simon and Adam are two of the people you probably want to give it to Mm-hmm. yeah yeah and i think this film still gets a lot right i think obviously it struggles because it tries to recreate some of the moments from the original and tries to sort of build tension in a similar way when really it's almost like we've seen it all before and we've discussed blair witch project on this so many times where we've said not only is it one of the best horror movies ever made but like it, it was a, it came out at the perfect time like in terms of culture in terms of technology the way it kind of um marketed the film with websites and stuff that was the internet was there was just enough internet when blair witch came out to make it viable the internet was like common enough that you could go and look things up but it wasn't so robust that you could say right i can absolutely without a shadow of doubt work out whether something is real or not the power of the blair witch was that there was that lingering doubt as to I'm not sure how much of this is real and how much this is marketing. I definitely told you the story when we did last spoke about Blair Witch Ben about my friend who was convinced after we all went out, it was around Halloween. We went out for like about eight of us, went and watched the Blair Witch. They made a lovely sleepover at my house. And then after a couple of beers, he was like, oh, lads, I think the the Blair Witch calling me to the woods. And we were like, one thing fictional or two, if not fictional, America, you're fine. 
<laughs> You're a long walk, boy. Yeah, you're out of a jurisdiction. You're safe. <laughs> you're fine. You, Blair Witch ain't getting on a plane. Blair Witch peelers would take her away the ocean. second she stepped off. <laughs> the peeler. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah. So I mean, has it been? Has it always been one of your favourites, Phil? No. Nope, is it one? Me, when I when I was no. younger, uh, it was just so new and just so different from everything else that mm. it was just like a complete culture shock i mean just watching it's like what is this movie I, the tent shaking thing was absolutely terrifying i remember that but the overall mm. experience like when i first saw it i was in high school so I was like, this isn't a movie what is this yeah what is this thing but as i got older it's like similar to texas chainsaw the first time i saw that it's like mm. what is this it's just someone screaming and being chased for 80 minutes yeah. and this was Someone being stalked for 80 minutes in the woods. Mm. So it was just so different to what I'd grown up on, like five thirteens, like me on Elm Streets. Mm-hmm. That yeah, when I first saw it, I was like, I didn't get it. I was like, Yeah, I, I don't get it. But with time, I've just learned mm. to really appreciate what went into making the film. Like the complete mm. artistry behind not just the film itself, but like the website, like you guys were talking about, and mm. just the entire so sort of story behind it that I know a bit more of now, but even back then I still, like, still appreciate like these five guys just had nothing and just made this complete phenomenon out of mm. literally pittance. Yeah. And you still, I still to this day, I think didn't um, maybe paranormal activity topped it eventually, but in terms of margin yeah. turned over for a film, maybe it could be obscene, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. What was paranormal activity? 15 grand. And this was like, 35 and then they had to get more money to make a film print to go to Sundance so I think the official budget would be around about 70,000 but to make mm. 250 million or something off yeah, that, and that's and crazy. that's without the rights that then were sold on to allow other people to do stuff right so as in terms of a product that those five people made phenomenally successful yes and but thinking around the kind of like times and orbs and like what (laughs) yeah i mean arguably as well like i you know i don't have a universal background here but surely it is massively um behind the rise of like the you know the reality tv film crew going out and doing like haunting examinations and so on as well like it must have some kind of um ownership of all of that stuff as well maybe not financially but certainly artistically I mean, I think it's just like a bunch of guys going out to scary buildings in the woods with a cheap mm. camera and a light attached to it. I mean, that's what yeah. those ghost hunting shows are, right? But it's also looking beyond that. It's like the birth of fandom. I mentioned the internet being small back then, but mm. it just exploded. As the film exploded, the internet exploded, and fandom generally helped create the Blair Witch. I mean, people had yeah. to own cinemas and request the film, similar to Paranormal Matters. Yeah. But yeah, without the fans, like the film wouldn't be the the success it is. Mm. What can the fans expect from the the the, the new Blu-ray? Then um, obviously it's a it's a it's a restoration. Um, there's pl- obviously loads of tons and tons of special features and bonus content as well. There is so yeah, I've uh, we we went back to the original high eights. We got them scanned, rescanned because I mean those tapes are twenty seven years old now, so. They were literally this close to like not existing anymore. So we have to digitize them in time. Went back to the 16 millimeter film reels as well. We scanned those. I put together the theatrical cut from scratch because obviously the wow. original negative isn't a negative in the traditional sense because they shot on tape. Yeah. And the version you've seen is the film print that was struck for Sundance. Okay. So it was okay. not really a a negative as such. It's literally just a copy of a print. So mm. that's why it's all contrasting wow. a bit. Yeah. And I've also gone back and done the festival cut, which is the, the film, the, the version that showed at Sundance before it went theatrical. So mm. there's about five minutes difference in that. But also, exclusive for you, I put together, ooh, I want to say, 80 minutes of deleted scenes. Wow. Oh, wow. So literally okay. The original cut of the film was two and a half hours. So with Mm. these, you can make a a longer version if you wanted to. As like a diehard fan, you could take all these deleted scenes, 
because the new deleted scenes is also the ultimate cut. It's like ten minutes of old deleted scenes, which everyone's seen. So there's technically ninety minutes plus all the deleted wow. film stuff we put together. So, oh, I stand corrected. It's probably about a hundred minutes. So you you basically you've seen like an additional film's worth and and then some. Yeah, and there's I'm hoping there's going to be a fan out there who just take all this footage, yeah. smash it all together. And make like a yeah. fan cut, <laughs> be like three hours long. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you definitely get your money's worth then with everything that. Also, um, the, the 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 sort of artwork looks amazing as well. Like the the, the artwork that's included, um, hundred and eighty four page hardback book with archive production materials, essays, Hever's journal, collector's yep. art cards. This is a uh, this is wonderful. And there's also Sal- a two and a half hour documentary about the making of that. Myself and Jed Shepard have been working on. So oh, Jed's Jed involved Roman directed in that. Oh, it about wow. Using and editing. So that's uh, been a f- amazing. Fun oh, yeah. Journey. Is this Jed... when we saw Jed out in Burkittsville yeah, a couple of there, years ago, right? When he was no, out there he, taking he's photos? just like a super fan. So he was there just oh, wow. because he wanted to go there. Ah, so that was before you were even working on it. He was just yeah. there for fun. Oh, man. He was just there because he's a, a huge fan. He's like a, a number one fan, essentially. Yeah. So yeah, oh, he, he got to know the mayor. Um, yeah, he's like, <laughs> oh, no, he's got he's got the keys. He's very rich, hardcore. Yeah, exactly. the keys to the city. Mm-hmm. But actually, they showed the um, the restoration in Burkittsville Saturday. I think they had a small little gathering in Burkittsville to finally see oh, how wow. it was always supposed to look. Oh mm, wow! Better to show it than so, Burkittsville. Is it quite popular in in Burkittsville? What do the local people think? No. <laughs> So it was a small screening. <laughs> it was very small, yes, very intimate, because they had crazy horror fans like going there and like in Book of Shadows, like desecrating a bit to their drive, doing that like, crazy shit. So yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a dirty word, I guess. The Blair Witch. Oh, God. But now like the new mayor's like just fully embraced it and is like yeah. he's trying to turn Burkittsville into Blair. Yeah, that's probably the best. It's a it's a platform. It, yeah, it's a platform to run on over there. Are you pro or anti? Yeah, anti Blair or pro Blair. <laughs> <laughs> wow, um, amazing! Obviously, we will we will put in the show notes a link to the to the order to where you can pre order, um, and it'll be available on November the eleventh. The Blair Witch Project Limited Edition Two Disc Blu Ray. I'm salivating m- merely looking at it now, so I'm definitely going to be picking this up because. Love me a bit of Blair Witch. And then, of course, as we mentioned already, Generation Terror, that screened at Fright Fest. Uh, we were there and we enjoyed it, of course. Um, and friends of the show, who former guests were involved as well. We actually um, interviewed Ariel talking about her book, Millennial Nasties, just yesterday. Um, yeah, so it went it went down a tree. Everyone, everyone seemed to love it. It feels like it was um, very well received, yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, it's the perfect venue for a documentary like that i mean it's a homage mm. and a love letter to to horror so we're better to to show a film like that than mm. at a, a venue and a festival that's dedicated to the love of horror of course uh the q a was great as well um one of those films that made me just go oh yeah i really need to watch that again oh i don't know if i've ever seen that making a making a list in my head um i did re-watch christopher smith's creep as well for oh, the first sweet. time first time in quite a few years recently um after watching your documentary so that was that was um that was great uh but yeah brilliant when, when did we find out when generation terror is going to be available um potentially streaming or elsewhere or no i mean we're still on the festival circuit at the moment so we're still looking for a home so it's at um citrus and monster fest on the 5th okay. of october then it's in norway the week after and then it's Lovely. in the brooklyn horror festival towards the end of the month october Oh, so wow, hopefully towards the end of all that we hopefully will have a home yeah hopefully wow. more people need to see watch it, this absolutely. space i need to catch up on these things but i do also love a documentary like this when i'm in the comfort of my own home not being able to disturb people at the cinema because i need my letterboxed up i gotta be adding things to that watch list in real time just watching my available free time ebb slowly away with each edition i like a style sir <laughs> I sure do. Um, yeah. So today we're talking about Blair Witch, the 2016 uh, Adam Wingard version, written by Simon Barrett. 
this was something that um obviously we were talking about just before the show just before we started recording that originally the film was shot under a fake title called the woods and i think at san diego comic-con when they did the reveal that it was going to be a blair witch movie they still advertised it as the woods so it was a big shock um and i remember at the time everyone being kind of like i don't know people were kind of into it and then i think as time went by people were like, actually it was a huge disappointment i feel like this is the f third maybe even fourth time that i've seen it now um i don't like actively dislike it i think it gets a lot of stuff right maybe just the characters are nowhere near as interesting i suppose you don't f really feel their despair and their absolute you know th complete loss of hope in the same way as we do with with the characters in the blair witch project i think that's because we're with them for the duration you know when someone just like goes off and goes oh bloody hell it's been five or six days i don't know what was going on there just a bit, and then later on, just a bit of a bit. Like you just don't, you don't understand it as much, do you? So it's almost like, okay, what? You know, if you were lost in the woods for five days and the sun didn't, and the sun didn't come up, I mean, would you know it was five days? I don't know. I think you just be. <laughs> it seems a bit, seems a bit nuts. But um, yeah, what was what was your guys' original um taking from this film when you saw it? Were you kind of a bit disappointed? Didn't mind it so much. Uh, yeah, for me, I think it was just a case of bad timing. I mean, 2016 mm. was like a peak anti-found footage mm. hysteria. I mean, everyone had enough of it by then. And the VHS films, even they were dwindling, which I think this is how it all started, was off the back of VHS 2. And mm. uh, yeah, I mean, when they, I think they wanted to try and reinvent the genre in a way and try and put some new life into it. But you don't do that by just essentially recreating a film that came out at that point. Well, was it not even like an anniversary? It was like nineteen years. Yeah. So it's like there's no genuine reason, no special reason for this film to exist. Yeah. But I think Lionsgate were sensible enough to realize that, and they've always kind of artists and before them, they were sensible with the directors they chose. So with the second one, they got Joe Berlinger who. So to me, like he's like one of the greatest documentarians of all time, or was until the mm. Netflix era. Not so good anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like those Paradise Lost documentaries, which were fucking phenomenal. <laughs> like to give him a, a feature about, like technically Blair Witch was supposed to be a documentary, so giving a film mm. that was supposed to be a documentary to a documentarian was like brilliant. That's a great idea. But then they just didn't let him have any control over the film, so it was like. Mm. You've given the keys to the fucking right guy. Why yeah. snatch him away? Like, made no and sense. They, they did that and then said, right, mate, put in a load of new metal and um, people doing that thing they do when they're crazy in a late 90s, early 2000s film where they shake with a really high shutter speed on. <laughs> and they also, I mean, they set the release date way in advance and they like, well, now, like, we finally go through all this production hell. I was like, mm. well, we've got 10 months now to get this fucking thing shot, edited and released, so... Get at it, go, go, Joe. Like, no one's ever going to make a, a masterpiece in, under those constraints, mm -hmm. I don't think. No. But with this one, I mean, you had Adam and Simon come off the back of your next. So they had a big thing with Lionsgate, they were friends. Yeah. So I think they had a bit more say in what they could do. I mean, it still feels like there was a lot of studio notes involved in the film. But I think yeah. for the most part, they, they were able to get through their horror passion mm. because they big horror guys and i think that shows in the final product yeah do you think this like blair witch now needs to just be a traditionally shot film rather than fine footage because when it's fine footage does it just feel like it's trying to recreate the original and i know obviously book of shadows tried that and yeah. i think to yeah. a degree ben you're absolutely spot on like i think so much of the magic we said earlier but the blair witch was its surprise and it was its it's the qualities that aren't on the page. It's the experience that goes with watching it that you cannot. There is not a director or writing team in the world that can create a surprise. Like you cannot forget that the old one exists. Like it's impossible to do. So I do think that if you want to do anything with this, that it would be now to make something which is entirely different, lean into it as a piece of fiction. Um do some fan casting here, like give it to someone with a film creation style, like a Mike Flanagan, who is incredible, um, you know, for 
the subtle things in the background of shots or is very famous increasingly for his television work in really heavily constructed almost theatrical like monologues and dialogues that they put in there put that kind of thing in there to deliver it as a piece of drama hell you want to go to rogue woman in black it do it as a stage play do it as a one setting stage play i would show up for that no i agree i mean there's so much law that was like established which you they bring it up in in this film i mean they talk about um Ellie, the witch herself, who's strung up in the trees. You could like, I don't know, be Babe Eggers ish now, but you could do like a witch type of really like film for that. The Rust in Past story, you could do mm-hmm. that. I mean, even Mary Brown could have her own film, like her crazy little experience. I mean, there's so much you could have done with it, but everyone just wants kids yeah. in the woods being scared. And and Mary like, Brown is why. that is is that the woman who 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 sees the witch and she comes up to her and she's like she's got hairy arms. Yeah, that's right. That? That's the one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because that's creepy. The way, she, the way she tells that story, and when she talks about her hairy arms and it's like a fur, it is super creepy. Like it's ha- hair on the back of your neck style stuff. Yeah, and and I mean the original was the was the master of like just not showing you anything, but just I think for me the the scare that affected me the most is when Heather is literally screaming when they're running away and Heather is screaming, "What is that? Oh my god, what is that?" Yeah, and it's just like I don't need to see it. I am terrified. By your reaction, I don't need to see a big old gangly thing in the background, you know, coming at you because it's just that fear of the unknown is so much more effective. And I think yeah. it's not just effective then. I feel like it's still more effective now. I think once you see the creature in most films, um, the, the, the kind of fear is taken out of it a little bit. And then you're in sort of like survival yeah. mode. You're like, right, I'm with the characters. Go that way. Do this. Get Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Whereas when you just don't know what you're dealing with, that is just absolutely horrific and there's your other Great angle story. as well audio it like audio something like the Blair Witch or there is nothing to see yeah you can make something phenomenally terrifying mm. yeah but they did actually want you to see something during that scene mm-hmm. so there's supposed to be a white figure running by the side of Heather but mm. they literally just couldn't pick it up on the, the film stock because they want enough lighting okay a white wow. figure so, which is say? why in this version you see when they're running you see oh no sam when peter's running through the woods with the trees are falling you see a white thing run past on the side through the trees okay wow so i'm guessing that's simon and adam paying homage to what yeah. should have been in that, so, well, white... that thing? <laughs> yeah so like a white figure just like some sort of like ghostly figure or something like yeah. that is that kind of what like, it is well they literally got a dude dressed up in a, in white and yeah, literally like a white thing over his head and white, white birds running through the trees, but there wasn't enough light to pick it up. Yeah, but obviously Adam and Simon went a bit further and they kind of like a little yeah. witchy thing running through the trees. Wow, yeah, I do need to probably go and watch some sort of breakdown of some of these scenes to see what we can actually see. Because it's I a think good it, job. I there think, is a lengthy documentary a coming out very soon. Then, <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of meant with this film, but absolutely with the original 100 percent. i'm all over it um okay so we will get into we'll do we'll, we've spoken about it quite a lot already but let's we'll, we'll do a deep dive into the film after we very very quickly just talk about some horror news for this week um first thing is that there's a salem's lot trailer for um the movies on max remake it's directed by gary doberman who directed annabelle comes home I think they're heavily marketed in as like from the creators of the Conjuring series. From the twisted um, minds of. From the twisted minds, from the sickos that brought you this. Um, but yeah, a remake. Um, we covered the miniseries a couple of years ago, a couple of years now. Holly and I did a double um, when you're away one week. So yeah, Holly and I talked about not only the original miniseries, but also you watched the Rob Lowe, the one. Rob Lowe remake. Ooh, I. Brave, <laughs> brave, brave. I mean, only one of them features two parents getting their heads bashed together by by uh, by a vampire so hard that they die. <laughs> bashed <laughs> three stooges of them to death. <laughs> I. Yeah, I mean, does anyone have any high hopes for this? I know it's been a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Because it's been like, it's been finished and like on the slate for a while, but for some reason they haven't like advertised it or sort of given it a fi- an official release yeah, it was date supposed for to be ages. Theatrical, but they just ditched it straight to streaming. Yeah, I think it was supposed to be theatrical. Well, yeah, it's another. They've done a few of those recently. Original, haven't they? And I love, I even like the 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 sequel, like the actual 
Return to Salem's Lot. I mean, goofy oh, yeah. shit, but I don't I think guess I've so, seen like, that the one. The right age. As, yeah. Um, ah. So, what release date have they got for this now? Sorry, I wrote it. Um, I have to go to the stuff and. Oh, okay. Like, oh wow. Rob Cohen. This up. Return to Salem's Lot. So I don't think I've seen that. No, I've you never seen the sequel. No, me neither. Um, so yeah, this is out on October the third. Straight in there for for Halloween season. Yeah, let's see what happens, and it? Let's, let's keep our hope. Let's keep our hopes high. That's all we could do. Um, I haven't actually watched the trailer because you know it's a story. It's a story I know I'm familiar with. It's just going to be. Um, but yeah, kind of looking forward to that. Why not? Oh yeah, Return to Salem's Lot, nineteen eighty seven. Yeah. Larry Cohen, it is. Larry Cohen, that's the one. Oh, Larry Cohen. Okay, okay. Interesting. Okay, I'll definitely definitely check this out. One hundred percent. Um, okay. Other other news. We mentioned so Forbidden Worlds Film Festival. We attended last year. Watched tons of new film. T- sorry, tons of old films on the big IMAX screen in Bristol. Um, they've rebranded it now. I think it's called the Mega Screen. I think before it was like, oh, is it, is it the Aquarium? And people were a bit confused. But now we're getting 4K restorations of The Hitcher, Dario Argento's opera, um, Cure, the Japanese movie. I watched that not so long ago. Great film. Um, I Know What You Did Last Summer and When a Stranger Calls. So the theme is kind of like Stranger Danger. Um, so yeah, over two days, the 11th and 12th of October at the Bristol Mega Screen. It is showing one, two, three, six movies altogether. I highly recommend it. It is a great event um, put together with a lot of love, care and attention. And, you know, to see some films that you know and love on a huge screen like that, but also see some films that you've never seen before on an IMAX screen. It's a great experience. Highly recommended. Um, Hopefully we'll get to attend again this year and we will report directly from there as well. Let's do it. anyone, Anyone else plan to attend? What are they, where are you based, Phil? I'm in Cardiff, and yeah, I because the Hitcher and When a Stranger Calls oh, yes. is showing there. I actually might make the the trip down, so I might yeah try for the Friday evening for the Hitcher. Amazing! But so they I, showed the, the the same restoration they showed at Fright Fest, didn't they? That's the one, mate. Yep. Yeah. And the geek in me also wants to go watch. Uh, I know what he did last summer as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um. Brilliant. And the only other piece of horror news I've got is that the Creep Tapes is continuing the Creep franchise this November. It's going to be a series, a six episode continuation of the movies Creep and Creep 2, um, starring Mark Duplass. Uh, and it's going to be on Shudder as well. Interesting take on it. I, I heard rumors circulating that there was going to be a third movie for a while. But on Friday, November the 15th, a two episode premiere will will be shown and then two new installments a couple of weeks later yeah looking forward to this any fans of um what's his name peach fuzz or oh, peach fuzz oh, oh, peach peach bloody, oh bloody peach fuzz and um, i'll hit you with another exclusive you can expect a, a special edition of creep in november oh wow. very nice very exciting oh, yeah, we've been speaking with mark and patrick yeah. throughout most of last year and this year and so oh, man. yeah they were keeping it very shtum about it's yeah. going to be a third movie. It's going to be a series. Yeah. I'm loving yeah, all the exclusives. I'm really excited for film. more creep. I loved the first couple. I thought they were really great. Really, really great filmmaking. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, absolutely. Like what they did with Blair Witch, like literally made enough, something from nothing. Yeah. Literally with creep, nothing. <laughs> it's just. And <laughs> a, a marks, wonderful. Like holiday like... home. And that was it. And like a oh, wonderful that... like piece of like performance as well. Mark Duplass similarly in within the same era becomes one of the creepiest characters ever to appear on film in the form of Peach Fuzz. But then also, if you've seen Safety Not Guaranteed, also the nicest, sweetest man in the world. Yeah, which I think he's like that's him. Like he is generally a very sweet, mm. caring guy. But Have when you, guys... you take that sweet care with this too far <laughs> yeah. <It's only> puggy <laughs> stuff. It's like, yeah you're getting a bit menacing now mate I mean, yeah, yeah you're a bit weird now stop that <laughs> give it a rest mark <laughs> um the one i love the film he made the film he's in with elizabeth moss and have you seen that i think that's another great example of, of him oh, I seen that. Like time yeah movie. yeah like sci-fi yeah. doppelgangery i don't think that's a i saw him recently in the lazarus effect as well and i was catching up on the watch list um 
Oh, nice. Yeah, a, a film which should have been like iconic because it's got such a stacked cast, but mm. uh, doesn't didn't quite land for me. But they had some interesting stuff in it. Now I think that's how he met Jason Blum, which is how Creep kind of become a Blumhouse film. Oh wow, wow. interesting. There we go. Because of the Lazarus yeah. effect. He's got he's got a lot he's got a great range. He's got a lot um, to answer for. To see more of him. He's got a lot to bloody answer for, old Blum. Um okay, that's all I've got down for news. Got one little uh, bit of friend of the show news, if you don't mind, Ben, ever so much. Of course I don't mind. Um, you know her, I know her, we both know her. Um, Phil, possibly you do as well. Um, former guest, friend of the show, um, Sarah of Horror of Sarah of Horror Fest. She has her film is finally got a premiere date. So uh her co- her Horror comedy Bunny Man Slaughter is getting its world premiere at Monsters of Film on October the 12th. Monsters of Film, if you are local to that, is in oh, Stockholm, yeah. Sweden. So Congratulations, Sarah. Nordic listeners, yeah. get yourselves over. Go and enjoy go and enjoy that. Wow. Amazing. It's great news. Super exciting. Looking forward to when we eventually get to be able to check that out. Absolutely. Uh, we should get back on the show. We should talk about Bunny Man Slaughter with her. Let's do it. Let's get it in the let's get it in the diary. Okay. Get on the docket. Um, on the docket. Um what we've been watching. So usually, Phil, we do like the last seven days if we've seen anything horror or horror adjacent that we wanted to mention. Of course, you're not on the show every week, so it doesn't have to be the last seven days. It can be you can have up to fourteen if you like. Oh, you know, fourteen Let me get my days. Box up. I can go on your letterbox and have a <laughs> and have a and have a peruse. Um the one thing, what, while, you're, while you're doing that, I will mention The Substance, which was the final film of Fright Fest, which me and Andy both missed, unfortunately, because we uh, we had to head home. That was disappointing. All the reviews, I was getting serious FOMO. I finally managed to see it on the big screen just a few nights ago, just on Friday night. And you know what? It was so damn good that I've now willed it into, into reality. We're going to do a full episode on it. The first week of October, Emma Cowley is going to join us. Obviously, she had plenty of great things to say when during our Fright Fest episode. So let's go and watch it. Let's go and check it out. Phil, did you manage to catch this at Fright Fest? I haven't made. No, I got offered, and there's actually a showing tomorrow that I can't make either. So I'm going to go watch it Friday. Oh man, I'm not oh, going yeah. to say anything other than believe the hype. I will just say that I think believe wow. the hype. One of those, uh, like, if you think you know when you're watching a film and you're like. This is a bit mad. Imagine that, but literally you're thinking that every five seconds you're going, it's probably a bit more mad now. Bit mad. And again, and even more mad. And you're looking around at people watching the film as so I'm thinking, I love the fact that everyone looks absolutely shell-shocked by what they're watching. Um, amazing performances from Demi Moore and Margaret, is it Qualley? Like, unbelievable. And it's very heavy in terms of like it's it's um the, the sort of messages it has and everything like that but it does it never feels like too much it always feels like it wears its heart on its sleeve we know it knows it's probably very over the top but i can't i can't really say much more about even virgin on spoiler but i will say absolutely check it out it is a, a mind well, a I'm mind a of Coralie, so a mind I'm, fuck. I'm there don't have to say it to me my man i'm there i'm already go. there i'm seated you're seated. Right, we'll get, get out. We'll it's get starting right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll do a full episode on it and we'll, 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 yeah, I'm sure we'll have plenty to say. So highly recommended to anyone. It's the 20th of September. It's out in UK cinemas. So go and check it out. I was just Googling it for some reason. I was like, oh my God, it's showing tonight, like in Bristol. And I literally just cancelled everything pretty much and just went, right, that's it. I'm going. Um, yeah. Absolutely amazing. Uh, okay. And, Anything else, you guys, that you've seen in the last... Bill, do you want to go first? I've got a couple. Yeah. So I actually saw a a very, very good Indian film last night called Sector 36, which is a... Okay. It's a take on the Noida killings from 2005, 2006. Mm. So it's your your true crime. Uh, Very much a, a grim serial killer film about a wealthy businessman and his... Servant, and this, this is on Netflix, isn't it? Kidnappings and murders that they uh-huh. carried out. It's on Netflix uh-huh. at the moment. It it's came on Netflix. Out on I was going to say, I recognise the poster. Apple, but hmm. If you like your your grim memories of murder esque serial killer films, which I do, then this will oh, be right yes. the alley. Memories of murders. That that's in one of your letterbox top four, right? 
Possibly my favorite film of all time. Oh yes. yes. Oh. <laughs> Hell yes. Well, that's a it's a, a wonderful choice. Um anything else at all? Is that the only thing you've seen recently? Um horror wise, I did see another Indian film, but it's bloody terrible, so I'm I'm not going to give you the oxygen man. <laughs> Let's starve that one out. <laughs> Tell us a little bit. I know, I've I've got... my way through the uh, the Black Emmanuel box set that Severin put out. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, oh. a big old set, so that's taken me some time. Yeah. I'm current, oh, I man. watched uh, Black Deep Throat. That was the, the most recent one I watched. Wow, wow, okay. They had the goal to kind of reimagine an Emmanuel, so they cast a new actress, mm. Aita Wilson, and they called her Claudine, I think I want to say her name was. And they actually made her a journalist. She did journalism. Like, how dare you? Emmanuel <laughs> do journalism. Just gets <laughs> naked and has fun. Just gets naked and has fun. So sorry, like lads, a... I've got to wrap this gang bang up. Bye, Nina. I have got a deadline for the morning. <laughs> exactly. the editor. Come on, journalism getting in the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but oh, if wow. it's the thing going to it like, itself, lads, sorry. Deep throat. You'd think it'd be like a porn thing right yeah no, it's like more like the actual deep flow of the 70s like yeah like the, <laughs> like, the th- she was yeah actually a just so uncovering that, scandals left right and center <laughs> how many how many films are in that severin um set i'll say 15 wow okay maybe maybe more wow. interesting um i got one more to add sorry andy before you before you jump in um Again, giving giving oxygen to bad films is it is it is it a good idea? Well, let's do it anyway. So I saw The Mouse Trap, that bloody slasher movie where they've gone. We've got the rights to Mickey Mouse or Black not and really White Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Mouse, not really Mickey Ma- Mickey Mouse, Steamboat, Steamboat Willie, yeah, Steamboat Willie. And now apparently this is the first of like three potential like Mickey Mouse Steamboat Willie style horror movies. I mean. I just feel like already I'm at the point where I'm like, right, okay, if something comes into um, public domain, let's just do something else. Let's not just go slasher because that just feel already, and we haven't had many, you know, we just had that and Winnie the Pooh. Already I'm like, no, I just can't stand it. It's just so... And this, in a way, might have a slightly better like cast of characters in it. But it just pans out in such a predictable way. And it's got like an... I don't think... It, this is kind of a spoiler, but I don't think it matters. He can like... This Mickey Mouse killer can like teleport, which is kind of like an interesting idea, right? You're like, what? A killer who can teleport? But I feel like they've just gone, and it can teleport, and they don't explain it, and they don't attempt in any way to do anything really that interesting with it. So overall, pretty rough. Um, what were the odds, man? What were the odds of that? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, when when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, my God, absolutely not. But I'm definitely at a point in my life where I think I enjoy watching bad films that I dislike as much as I will enjoy watching good films that I like. <laughs> just um, to feel something, man. Just to feel <laughs> something. <laughs> just anything. Make me yeah. feel something. Just, just to feel the horrible. Hatred, the yeah. hatred running through my veins. But I didn't absolutely. Do you know what? I will say this. Compared to the old Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey movies... Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey movies made me like sort of itchy and and like sweaty and like oh god, I, this is this is bad. This one, I, it was still kind of watchable despite the fact I'd probably still give it like two out of ten. Does that make any sense at all? <laughs> you just hate watching these things. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's what's just happening. A, just a horrible case of but self abuse, se- Ben. But the second I find out a film's bad, like Madam Web or like Borderlands or something, or the Crow remake, for example, you have to sleep still. Sec- All right, let's see about that, shall we? Well, I go, I go from being like kind of like indifferent, like uh, I don't, I'm not really that bothered about it. But as soon as I find out it's terrible, I go, oh my god, get it immediately into my eyes. I actually went to yeah. see the Crow remake at Fright Fest. I got really, really drunk on the. Oh, Sunday. okay. Oh, yeah, because it. Can... I was like, I'm going to watch the Crow remake. Big. Mistake. No. Big, oh. big. Mistake. I thought, I'm drunk. This is the perfect time to watch a terrible movie. Yeah. I just got angry. Oh. I just got so angry. I threw my drink at the end of it. I was so angry. I was like, You threw your drink? Movie. Oh, my God. That must have been real bad. I hope there wasn't too much left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Icy shards all over the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But at least, um, wait. What's his name? Scar 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 Scar. At least 
at least he's ripped, right? At least he's yeah. ripped beyond all compare. I'm like, what is going on there? Does does the character of the crow need to be that ripped? I don't know. It's kind of and did it mad. need to have that much backstory? Like we know what happens. Like oh, there's a tons of backstory. An hour and twenty minutes of backstory. Like, ah, thank you. I'm aware of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Explaining is... each feather on the crow that carries your spirit <laughs> from the underworld. <laughs> I'm going to watch it anyway. So, um, yeah. I know what you mean, and, though, Ben, when you say about like when a film's bad, it almost takes the pressure off that you're going to sit down and properly enjoy this because it's taken me until mm. my flight when I was traveling last week to sit down and watch acclaimed film, June 2, because I'm like, when have I got the time? When am I going to? Basically, it requires me to be stuck on a plane for seven hours with a complete inability to be doing or going anywhere else <laughs> uh, watching it as the director intended on a screen this big um oh yeah like Absolutely. when something when something i know is bad it was like well i can watch this in the least optimal most distracted conditions mm. in the world and i'm not doing anyone a disservice yeah i got i got thrown out for madam webb and morbius as well man i know they're not good but i'll watch them any day over an avengers movie oh wow yes, okay Eddie. interesting yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I said it. No one else when you, is going to When you is. see so, hear someone saying on your left, you want to turn around and you don't want to see <laughs> beloved fan favourite. You want to see someone say it's Morbin time. And exactly. Turn, it's cinema. Morbin time. <laughs> and then fly fly through the underground train station like a packet of crisps caught on some wind. <laughs> <laughs> Believe oh, Matt, man. Matt Smith was having a good time in that movie. and His good yeah. time made me have a good time. <laughs> yeah. okay. You funny. look at Jared Leto starring in something as a mark of quality. Yeah. <laughs> Respect to Jared, though. He he gave her his all. I don't mm. know why. <laughs> he's, like, yeah. he's in a very serious movie. He's like, this is going to be the fly. Mm. I'm going to be the new Jeff Goldblum. I'm the new Seth Brundle. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> and Smith got the memo. He's like, I'm just here to have fun. I'm going to take the piss out of everything. Have a lovely laugh. Yeah, have a good time. <laughs> Uh, Andy, what, Here's what, what did you A couple of things I got for you, Ben. One, um, I watched, I feel victim of um, like viral videos on Facebook Reels. I saw John Watts's Clown from 2014. Have you, have you seen this? Yeah, man. Yeah, Eli Roth produced. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, really heavily repackaged this. as like, you know, clowns, they're scary and real. And I'm reading this in a creepy pasta voice, but slightly out of time so I don't get copyright striked. That film has been completely co-opted <laughs> by that algorithm. Um, I think a lot of people do just think it's just like a like a viral video, but it isn't. It is a clip that is from this film, Clown, which it has... It's slow descent into madness movie. Yeah, like such, really, a, really you know, good. such a ridiculous <laughs> on paper thing, whereas a man, kid's birthday, clown's cancelled. Oh, don't worry, there's a clown costume here. Unfortunately, <laughs> does turn him into a mad child-eating clown monster. Oh, and it no. gets real serious, but it is... It's decent. It's pretty good. Yeah, man. I've been a fan of that since it came out. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, I've also been diving into the back catalogue of our old friends over at Troma, um, seeing if I can hit some of their old classics and not-so-classics. So far, I've hit two. One of them, um, Nocturne, Night of the Vampire. I would not recommend, I'm afraid. Um set in the streets of Melbourne where two vampires and their mate who is a cannibal go around just eating people that they find um, fairly incomprehensible from a story perspective and had a very, very weird sound grading, which made it really hard to follow, um, yeah. which is a shame. Clearly made for practically nothing. Lots of naked people lying about and talking about eating folks. Lots of philosophy quotes. Um, but then... <laughs> And I said this in my review, Ben, sometimes you want high cinema, sometimes you want high art, sometimes you want A24, sometimes you want a bit of midsummer and symbolism. Sometimes, Ben, sometimes, Phil, you want a nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell from 1990. Oh, oh my God, you weren't joking. <laughs> no, that wasn't a made-up title, I said, just off the bounce, though. That is a film yeah. I've recently watched. Um Proper, oh, like, 1930s-style rotoscoped um, models in the background. Power Rangers-style people in costumes. Lots of the main characters also dual role as featured reptile man. Um, it is <laughs> it is fantastic nonsense. It is fantastic oh nonsense. Um, 
he was well worth post, poster well alone. worth well worth silliness if you're attracted particularly by the word nymphoid you may be disappointed in the year of our lord 2024 with that kind of things probably available on other websites not the trauma well one but um if you just want some silly barbarian action with dinosaurs and lots of people dressed as lizard men being slurped off by models off camera brilliant <laughs> The plot says the last woman on earth has to deal with lizard men, a giant monstrous mutant, and a love interest. Oh no, not a love interest. <laughs> He's the worst one. Um yeah, so I watched I watched those two bad boys and then finally I watched um a bit of a niche one that I've been trying to catch up with for a while. So a nineteen eighty four film by David Blythe called Death Warmed Up. Have ever either of you seen this bad boy? Hmm. I may have. So his a kid sure. is hypnotized by a scientist to kill his parents, ends up in a mental institution. As a grown man, he returns to seek revenge on the scientist. Um, very like um, sort of Australian style schlockiness. Um, very very low budget from 1984, but um, incredibly gory. Really sort of grubby and indie feeling. Um, I quite enjoyed this. I quite enjoyed this. It's 78 minutes long. That has 78 minutes long. Oh, um, yeah. Absolutely, man. No, no I've, de- I've definitely not seen no, that. I've not seen it, but I'm gonna. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It won't. It doesn't go to the extremes of, you know, the likes of your of your brain dead and so on, but, you know, really interesting. Um, it's got sort of, not just because of where it's set, sort of Mad Max-ishness in this way, this sort of, there is a gang of they're not zombies, but they're reanimated people st- spared from life, but from death rather by this by the act of this scientist who then just become sort of pain stricken, violent punks chasing after people and trying to take revenge. Um, some great scenes where uh, a group of teenagers chased through like some underground tunnels by these horrible blokes on motorbikes. Um, it's really over the top, really rubby in that very satisfying sense. Good watch. Amazing. Yeah, I mean. I watched um, an Australian film not too long ago. It's it only about an hour long. I want to say it was called Fright. And right, it was right. like a TV show, but it was yeah. like a pilot. But the pilot never got picked up. But someone's released the the pilot. And it's pretty grubby. It's very Texas Chainsaw in places. Oh, very yeah. nice. Yeah, it's on Shudder. Right. It's on Shudder. Yeah, so. There you go. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Just looking at the... There. Going back a step, the lead actor Michael Hurst from the film Death Warns Death Warmed Up. Um, the lead actor? Yeah, yeah. Yes, he's right. the main character. Direct he's a director these days. He directs uh, some some interesting things, including most recently, Power Rangers Dino Fury and Power Rangers Cosmic Fury. He's in the world world of Power Rangers, Andy. There you go. It's an important good <laughs> you know that you could have made Nymphoid um Baron and Dinosaur made. Hell. It's your man. If you need that remade, <laughs> there's your fellow. Amazing. For a second, I was thinking it was Mike Hurst because if you remember, we interviewed a director called Mike Hurst at Fright Fest last year. Yeah, and I was I was like, if this is the same guy, it's going to be unbelievable. I don't think it is. Um, that would have been interesting. But apart from that, we've all seen the 2016 Blair Witch, which is a 2016 found footage supernatural horror film directed by Adam Wingard, written by Simon Barrett. It's the third film in the Blair, Blair Witch series, direct sequel to the 99, 1999 film, The Blair Witch Project, while ignoring the events of its 2000 follow-up, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. How rude. Why would you do that? It stars James Alan McCune, Callie Hernandez, Brandon Scott, Cor- Corbin Reed, Valerie Curry, um, and the plot... After discovering a video showing what believes to be he believes to be his vanished sister Heather, James and a group of friends head to the forest believed to be inhabited by the Blair Witch. We have got five out of ten on IMDb, thirty-eight percent Rotten Tomato audience score, thirty-one percent critic score, two point four out of five on Letterboxd, and some choice reviews from that. Lily says the Blair Witch finally conquered her fear of making public appearances. So proud of her. Three stars. Gizmo fan says, if the scariest thing about your movie is a fucking foot, then we have a problem. Two and a half stars. MJ says, takes everything that made the original so damn iconic and mocks it to the point of abstraction. Two stars. And I was looking for some positive ones. I really was. I really was. But then I came across 
a half star review. And I feel like when there's a half star review, I need to include it just to see what it, see what they're saying. Can't think of a more shameless example of Hollywood taking a genuinely exciting, provocative, audaciously experimental work of art and using its name to sell an ugly, generic, self-referential piece of shit. Esther, half a star. I don't think it's as bad as that. Oh, um, Esther, offended. <laughs> <laughs> fuming about this raging um yeah so as we already mentioned when this was sort of revealed at san diego comic-con in 2016 it was under the fake title of the woods and i think i remember seeing the footage originally from inside san diego comic-con when it was revealed to be blair witch and everyone whooping in delight and screaming at the top of their lungs can't believe we're gonna get another blair witch movie i guess it's kind of interesting that it's a franchise that's 25 years old and we've only had Three installments. That's been to space yet either. Come on, I haven't been to space. Um, there's no been there's no been no Blair Witch versus anything. What would Blair? Who would Blair Witch take on? Who's like something that lives in the woods? Uh, oh, I was gonna say someone else who you can't really see. So the Death's Design from um, Final Destination. <laughs> oh yeah, that's pretty She'd good. Be... They'd probably team up, though, in the end, like Godzilla and Kong, wouldn't they? She'd trap them in, like, a time loop forever where, basically, death would get infinite goes uh, having, <laughs> having an accident happen. Bloody yeah. hell. But I uh, know maybe those, are, those reviews are harsh, man. I mean, I know it's not. Yeah, halfway through it's reading that last... piece, is it? But halfway through I'd, reading I'd that last one. I listed out all my pros and cons when I was yeah. watching it, and there were far more pros than cons. Okay. I think I think that's the problem as well, though, Phil. As you mentioned, I think because the Witch is so heavily influenced by fandom, no one hates a thing more than fans do. Um, yeah. And I think that's where it gets weaponized as well, right? In the other side, when you have such expectations of a of a yeah. thing, like how many yeah. of those um, reviews that Ben read were reflecting what it was versus the original, rather than what it is mm. as yeah. a as a film. I think it's you know, not claiming that uh, I'm some sort of sage in this and I can separate myself from these uh, petty human emotions, but at the same time, I can see why, like, some people maybe lose sight of what it is. No, for sure, because rewatching it, I was like, it does a lot of throwback nonsense, which seems to be, like, since Rocky Balboa, like, you've got to have these callbacks. Like, you have to have these. <laughs> so it does that a lot, which is annoying, but I think it did a lot of building on the law that was set up in the, the first film as well. Yeah. But we can get to that. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for this one. I think when these callbacks come in as well is that there is, I'm going to say mistakenly, Hollywood take note here, when people put references in things, I think there is an over obsession and a, and a too heavy a focus on every single reference you put in there being accessible and being something that everybody in the cinema is going to get. No. Be really dense. Put things in there that people are not going to get. Put things in there that is just for the oh, super God. fan that that aren't going to get it. And you know, let just have one um, voice being like in the back of the cinema going, "Oh, yeah, that's that's the thing that happened." When, you know, do it. Like well, this you know, film kind of did that, I guess. I mean, are you? When was the last time you watched the original? It's been a couple of years. Uh, I'm certainly not going to have the the knowledge that so, you've got, but you've got one for me. There's an American flag in the window of one character that pops up in this one. Did you see that's that cool. watching it? No, no. no so Mary Brown, a little trailer. There's the American yeah. flag in the window. She said, "There's the American flag. There's Mary Brown's house." And uh... when they go to see Lane, he's got the American flag in his window, just like Mary Brown's. Like, Oh, he's the new Mary Brown character. Got you. Got oh, you. that's super cool. You see, these are things that it's... But that annoyed me. <laughs> oh, no, it annoyed you. Oh, no. I was like, oh, what are you it. doing that? Why? Just let Lane be Lane. He doesn't have to be the new Mary Brown. Mm. Just stop with What's the cold backs. I feel like having Talia... I mean, Talia and Lane to a degree, but Talia was basically like the exposition character, wasn't she? She was the one who was like going, oh, yeah, you know... Rather than allowing us to understand the lore, you know, people who hadn't seen the original and finding out a bit more about the lore, we literally just had this character just telling us of the lore every time there was any sort of break in in events happening, which was, I don't know, I kind of, I know that there was she was supposed to be like, she's like an expert of sorts, but 
Yeah, I don't know, I just, fa- just exposition dumps, right? Like, exposition here's dumps. Here's the Rusting Par story again. Here's the Coffin Rock story again. Yeah, you but know. like d- delivered in such a way where it's like it's it's not delivered. It's not jet. It's not a creepy story. It's not like a shocking story. It is just you need to know these bits because it's not really relevant essentially to this particular film is it because they're, going, they're trying to find heather that's the story yeah. in the original they're making a film about the blair witch and the legend of the blair witch so all this stuff is relevant but it's all back to the original and like we have to justify why they're standing in the corner again so here's the rusting past story over and over again yeah and they even yeah. like they kind of bring it up in the original but uh the ella kedwood story mm. she's apparently the witch she's the person that Heather is hunting, like trying to find out about. Mm. And they explain in this one, which they didn't in the the first film, like she was suspended up in the tree, like on yeah. a, a torture rack, which is why the Blair Witch signal mm. looks like that. Why? And also making oh, you the, have to say that. <laughs> making oh. the the making the stick figure like almost like a have like voodoo doll like properties as well. That's 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 new as well, right? Is that new? Um it is, but in the original when they when they find all those sticks, like Mike's like, there's all kind of weird shit here. Voodoo shit. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. kind of hinted it in the first one. Yeah. But so I, I did it's... like the fact that they played up mm. on that. So like when she snaps the figures, she snaps. So like, yeah. Nice. I think that's one of my highlights of the movie because I think that comes as a genuine, like big surprise yeah, as those exactly. pieces <laughs> come. But, mm. you know, you've conjured it now. Like speaking about the iconography of this film is still incredibly strong. Like the you know, like from a practical perspective, like you could be banging out them stick dollies ten a dozen. Sticks are free. <laughs> Buy yourself a <laughs> bit of string from the Woolworths. You'd be well away. Make hundreds of them. Like, and Tell then what a, what a really, really strong icon that you can make that I think brings that fear to the film and then makes that accessible for you ever been in the woods, make yourself a little stick dolly and just throw it off somewhere. That scares someone and a that's bit. That's like, what they did with this one was like when they wake up and they're like all around the tents and they all look the same. Mm. I was like, why do they all look the same? And it gets to another like Lane and Talia made them to try and scare the guys. I was like, well done. But then yeah, yeah. Like the next night they're all over the place again. It's like, why? Like yeah. in the original, I thought it was so creepy because I was like a burial ground type thing. Like they were just like victims, maybe. Like that could just mm. be a graveyard for all we know mm. so nothing's explained but in this one it's like you get the rocks outside your camp and now you got the stick figures outside your camp like mm. why <laughs> why does that have to be there it wasn't there in the original why did you have to mm. force that in there just because cool stick man let's get it in get it in mm. so that was a bugbear again but they did yeah. amp it up like like they made the one stick man out of Talia's hair which is when it became a yep. doll, so I did like mm. that aspect of it, but yeah, so it was like more stick men, more stick men. That's what Blair Witch is, right? <laughs> stick men, stick men, more stick men. Stop. There, was Stop. Some, there was something very, I feel like this was very prevalent around about this time in horror cinema as well. It's like people just getting slurped off into the air or like into into the darkness, like that was happening a lot. Obviously, this the tent gets like sucked off into the sucked off the tent gets sucked into the air and then like lands it was almost like a a very extreme like visceral version of like the scares that they tried to have in in the Blair Witch Project yeah. whatever like I did appreciate that to be honest I thought it was like really well choreographed mm. that type of sequence because in the original it's like a, t- a tent being shaken yeah. it's like ooh yeah, yeah. terrifying not in 2016 no no so like, when they're lo- running through and the, the tent flies up in the air and they're running and it comes mm. crashing back down it's like Cool. Yeah. Like, I think they do escalate that well for modern filmmaking. Obviously, you're looking several years in, you know, from when the original was made. Now, your technology's improved, your budget is improved. You can light a forest a little bit more effectively. You are able to see things. We lean into the technologies that are now available with things like the the drone and the head cameras that give us um, that give mm. us some additional scenes. Phil, before we get into the main plot, though, what I wanted to test go back to your memory on though um in the original heather does that scene where she you know is speaking direct to camera she's terrified that night in the in the tent and she apologizes to her mom and her dad for everything did she mention james at all you just completely mug her brother off you have no idea she has a brother no <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird. maybe that's what he was looking for and this 
nice of you to mention me in your, <laughs> in your like, how old video. is he in this? He must be like, what? Yeah. 20 something? Yeah. yeah. And so, like, so he must have been like three, four. It doesn't <laughs> it yeah. oh, I probably she probably was pissed off with him back then <laughs> when she was at school. Like, nah. You know, rug rat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no mention of a, a brother. I'm he mentions legit. a boyfriend, but no. She no mentions brother. her neighbors. She mentions her acquaintances, her colleagues. Yeah, and then they go, "Oh, you got sure. a brother, remember?" Nah, nah, no. Cousin Jim, I'm like, sorry, I won't see you in the future. <laughs> really yeah, mess our I, Christmases together. I think it's it's strange, isn't it? Because I guess we're trying to. James is supposed to be the lead throughout this, and then it kind of switches up eventually to be. Is it Lisa? Lisa, kind of like for the it should final? be Ashley because it's her documentary, right? If you're following. The yeah, show model. It's like this is her documentary. Yeah, James has the connection, and then in the in the opening scene, she actually gets a little bit of shit from the others because they feel that they they've been friends with him for longer, and saying, "Well, why don't you just come with him and film it?" Because he's asked you to. Let's not. Why do you have to make this your project? Hmm. I mean, and fair enough to Lisa. She's got a film project to end in. Come on. Yeah. School. Oh, damn it. Oh, yeah. It's it's been. So what year? So it's supposed to be nineteen ninety four that they vanished, isn't it? So, literally thirty years. Ah, uh, no, sorry, thirty years to, to now. It's like twenty. Um, God, what's wrong with my maths today? Twenty one years. Twenty one, twenty two 22 years. What, what? He can't genuinely be thinking that he's going to go out there and find some sort of like wild woman <laughs> living out there. Remember what she looks like. like yeah. Like four. Yeah, exactly. Maybe he's watched or... the film loads though. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he finds thing. he's the only oh, person that's seen the film very... more than you, Phil. Yeah, Sorry, go on, Phil. The one person who's seen it more than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How they found the footage was really big as well. So it was like they found it by YouTube. a tree, they got struck by lightning. Oh wait, yeah, of course. That's next right. to the house. But when they find but he's like, here's where I found the tape. There's no house, but at the end you see the tree mm. next to the house. It's like, yeah. So is it like... like this paradox? Ting, it's like parallel you is all fucked up but... parallel universes slash time loops slash stuff like that that i guess they hint at but never fully tried to explain which i think is good i feel like if we had a character like trying to fully explain these things to me i'd be even more annoyed so luckily they didn't give talia an extra task <laughs> as the film went on to try and explain time loops got any food she says got any food give me i'm eating in five days give me that bloody nutrigrain bar for god's yeah. sake give me that nature valley <laughs> yeah, and then just opens it, all the crumbs just go everywhere. That was cool because it does hark back to the original in the non, like on the nose way. Because like when they're walking around in circles and stuff like that, like time seems to just, like not exist. I love that. And the original it's amplified in this one. So, like she, in the... the witch can say, oh, like this time frame for you, this time frame for you." Yeah, so that was pretty yeah. cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah, just fucking with people. How long do you reckon you'd be able to survive before you really like did a head in? Like if you were Ray Mears and you could eat like moss, and you could... <laughs> moss, <laughs> you could eat like moss indefinitely in the forest. Like you'd eventually get fucked up and just let you own. <laughs> well, just like just kill him. Yeah. Lightning, <laughs> lightning him. Die. Will you those just take two... one of those sticks, will you? I've made those of all your hair, and he's like, "No, you must be very careful of nature." <laughs> I can't eat those. I can't eat those. He is more at one with the woods than I am. Damn it! <laughs> Wasted by my own petard. <laughs> So it starts off with James finding this. So, so he finds a video on YouTube containing an image of a woman he believes to be his sister, Heather, who obviously from the original disappeared. Um, and then wanted to find out the truth. He gets a little crew together. Are they just filming because it's going to be the, the, the documentary is supposed to be closure of sorts for them, for him? Like, yeah, what's it called? I the guess. absence of closure or something? Is that the name of the documentary? Yeah, I ain't watching that. No one's watching that. <laughs> that sounds like what's a, this? a film student documentary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The absence of closure. We went into the woods and didn't didn't find my sister. So literally got no closure. Got got no closure. That's the end. It's, it's like that to do a director's commentary, <laughs> like as the brother of the the brother of the victim to that film. Hand that in. There is not a teacher in the world that's not giving you an A for that level of trauma. Exactly. Um, so yeah, the group. So is his friend Peter, Ashley, Lisa, um, and then the locals Talia and Lane, who had uploaded the photo to YouTube. 
say that they will show the, the group the location of where they found the, the tape, but only if we could join in. Can we join in, please? Um, oh, and they have that um, they have that scene, don't they, where they're like, can we have a chat here? And they have to go outside and get episode. You know, they, they want to come with us. And they were like, it's a free country. Just let them come into the woods. <laughs> come on. Yeah, what if they're making little stick figures trying to stitch us up? Oh, they seem lovely. They definitely, definitely won't do that, especially if I antagonize them by laughing at literally everything they say with a straight face for the first <laughs> bit of the film. Yeah. But before, of course, we do that and they have to go there in the first place, they have to um, have a night out on the tiles with their cameras running. Yeah, that yep. was a throwback to the original again because like when in mm. the, the hotel getting drunk. I mean, they even, yeah. After that party scene, they have another party scene in the hotel. Where they're drinking Johnny Walker, just like in the original. It's like, yeah. Oh, it's like, okay. it's just like three little scenes put together, like them jumping mm. around the head, drinking Johnny Walker. That's it, over. Like, so you just had a party scene to top off your party scene for, for no reason. <laughs> like, I get it. They were partying. They're going to be hung over the next day. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Like, like they were in the original. I get it. Oh, can you imagine they're literally having a terrible hangover and going through shit like this? It would be, oh my God. That would be a stuck. blessing. Getting stuck in a time loop while hungover. I can't think of anything worse. It feels like you're oh, stuck in a time loop sometimes. Never ending hangover. No. <laughs> Snapping every one of those twig babies I saw. <laughs> twig babies. <laughs> Either that or yeah. like if once you've worked out that they are things like, you know, try and do it, like kiss them on the head. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's nice. Um, I guess like in these early scenes, like it's pretty straightforward, you know, they're getting to know each other, constantly filming and going. Stop filming me. But one Stop thing filming me. Well, someone else. I thought was um, obviously they couldn't do it in the original, but the the updated technology, like in this one, they got mm. all like those little GoPros or where yeah, they yeah. attached to their heads for the drone. They got that security camera. They also got like GPSs. So like, how could we possibly get lost? How could we get the lost? They got a map and a compass. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah you can go make it. But with this one, they got all the modern bands of technology and. They got a drone as well. Them. I feel I feel like he could have made more of the drone in terms of like what kind of things in in terms of some scares or potentially some other things. They kind of what do they do? Like take it up once or twice, and then the second time, yeah, it just it, gets knocked. That cool out thing when you go up and you see like the woods just like do not end. Now once yeah. you, oh shit, you are in deep shit oh, now. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. So things are going pretty well for a while until they decide to cross a river. Um, in bare feet i feel like you just go let's just walk a bit further down and find a, a way across somehow do we have to cross it and in, in bare feet as well that was another was... good call back to the original i thought we're not in the on the nose kind of way so yeah in the the blair witch timeline they mention a girl being uh, may brown mentions it as well a girl getting drowned in like an inch of water in the river so mm. it's like the witch is in that water so like when they take their feet up they take their shoes off and they go into the water yeah. Why are you doing that? The witch is in there. The witch is in there. <laughs> the bloody witch is in there. They're going to get you. They're going to get you. And because in, in the original, one they... of them. Yeah. I mean, you're asking for trouble taking all your shoes and socks off. I your shoes no, and socks, especially when no, you're in what... hiking boots. Really, you're meant to get like a little bit of water resistance in those bad boys. No one was wet. No one was rolling up their trousers either. I was. I was. Yeah, the, the amateur hour, wasn't it? So, yeah. sorry, so we'll we'll all just go hiking in our skinny jeans. This won't be deeply unpleasant <laughs> for the rest of the day. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they avoided can... gangrene by you know taking their socks off. Like, only place, friendly. only place worse not to like go wearing jeans and getting wet. If you're not the forest, it's Alton Towers. You go on Ripsaw and get a wet pair of jeans. It's your afternoon <laughs> over. <laughs> on Rip, are you comparing the Blair Witch to Ripsaw? Is that what you compare? Very much so. Very much so. Very similar. Yeah. I suppose it's more um, similar to Hex, the ride at Alton Towers, than Ripsaw. But yeah. you do get a bit wet, like the river. Yeah. Uh, and this one, thankfully, their wet jeans are the least of their worries after one of their party contracts a case of bonitis that will riddle her for the re remainder of the film. But I did like and... that. It gave like them an excuse not to be able to like hike continuously all day, every day. It's like, oh, one of them's injured now. Uh oh. Yeah. Thanks. So she stems up. She stands like a sharp. Did she say a sharp rock or something like that? Um... Well, she thinks it's basically the witch in it. It's the witch's bloody old sharp finger, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, so upon setting up camp for the night, um, 
Lane and Talia are doing some doing some carry on doing some more exposition dumps talking about the disappearance of Heather and her crew the 1940 to 41 Rustin Parr murders what's his chops gets his hair off trying to get the uh, tent put up mm. oh you you wouldn't no one's you? helping at all that is the worst thing oh, he's yeah. the going you're doing it wrong <laughs> no tents are difficult at the best Peter time, that's his name helping. Peter he's like he's <laughs> not Peter He's trying to put the tent up. He's like, is this meant to be bent? He's absolutely <laughs> losing his temper with it. Actually, I don't know actually what's worse. When you do that and then someone goes, I'll oh, give it here, I'll do it. He's like, no. If you take this <laughs> off me to do it, imagine I'll probably lo- die. Ima- imagine losing your egg like that and someone's still insisting on filming you. <laughs> You'd want to break every single camera there. <laughs> yeah. But in um, Peter's the only one saying, turn the camera off. Yeah. So- he was like from minute one. I've had enough. Yeah, putting up that tent was enough. I'm done with no, this. No, we've we're, we're making a documentary about the absence of closure. This is very important for this particular Any moment. Any absence of closure is this, the flap of this tent is going to be absence of closure because <laughs> this is never going on here. Um, yeah, I feel like if that moment, if the Blair Witch had come for him, Peter could have taken her. He could have. He he wouldn't need the viewfinder of his camera. He could have looked at her straight in the eye, and he would have slapped her off the screen. <laughs> Because he was so raging, white hot rage. <laughs> um, they all get after all the stories that they tell about obviously the witch being um racked up on the on the tree, and that she had um weights on her limbs. She was like it's like a makeshift torture rack, wasn't it? Then they go to bed, and at night there are some strange, spooky noises, uh, as obviously they are. And everyone wakes up the next day at two p.m. Absolute stop it, teenagers. These guys, yeah, awake at two p.m. But everyone's like, "Nah, there's absolutely no way I'd be, we could be awake at two p.m. Something supernatural's got to be afoot." Um, and then what that noises, face. So what... Stop saying foot, mine's bloody hurt. <laughs> what, <laughs> what what noises do they hear at night? Just sort of like wails in the distance and stuff like that. Isn't it? I can't actually remember what noises they hear. That was the sound effects were so elaborate in this movie. Like, when yeah. just, like whenever her foot got hurt, you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh no, it was ridiculous. <laughs> the 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 jump scare noises were ridiculous as well because I'm like, surely in most fan footage films you just want like the natural sound to to just be the soundtrack essentially, but there's so many moments where you know there's a moment earlier later when Talia sort of stood facing one way and someone goes up to a couple of couple of really heavy jump scares back back like just other people walking into frame, like uh, with like, extra sound. She even acknowledges that Lisa's like, why do people keep doing that? Yeah, yeah, she does, <laughs> and it is like that because you got you got to announce yourself in these situations, haven't you? You've got to care. I'm um, I'm here now. I'm not creeping up on you or anything. Uh, wear a bell like a cat. Wear a bell. Just do heavy footsteps. That's what I do. I think that someone's not noticed I'm there. Just do heavy or constantly footsteps. whistle. <coughs> courtesy cough. Big figures. Yeah. Courtesy a courtesy cough goes a long way, doesn't Especially it? Especially in bear country as well. Surely you want to be doing that anyway. Yeah, it's true. Um, so when they wake up at 2 p.m., all the stick figures are hanging from the trees, um, which obviously everyone's noticeably freaked out by. But when they get on the road again, um, Lisa notices some twine in Lane's backpack. What a silly, silly man. Just leaving his backpack open like that. And he's like, it's just a bit of rope. I'm like, I think you find this twine. You know, no one's no one's calling that rope these days. <laughs> Name one other thing you do in the forest of, uh, using twine <laughs> other than faking Blair Witch yeah, dollies. It's just it's just me twine. It's all it For is. Twine it's just... swing, man. Yeah, it's, it's, just me pers- it's me personal twine. All right, <laughs> don't go hating on me personal twine. I'll do what it's I want. In case some it. dickhead breaks a bit of their tent. But they do it admit could... several things you could use twine for off the top of the dome. They immediately. Admit, admit to it. They go, yeah, me and Talia made these filly figures to try and convince you to believe in the curse. Right? Okay. And they do that, some but... shoving of them like they're in Grange Hill. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One... Which guy is it? Is it... Wait, which Peter, guy is it? Peter, I think. Peter? Isn't it? Gives well, he literally takes, up, takes off his bag to like chase one of them at one point just to go, fuck off out of here. Yeah. yeah. They get banished. They literally get banished from the group. Yeah, they're like, oh... I love it. First, he still wouldn't. They first uh, Lane escalates it and gives them some no fuck you. But then after they storm off, he like comes back two minutes later, like what what what? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I haven't got. You've got a GPS and all that yeah, stuff. We <laughs> what fuck all? We're gonna be lost. So what are we gonna do? And he's like, right, 
I tell you what, just turn around, walk two miles, you'll be at the fence. See ya. See you later. Oh, man. It's harsh. It's harsh. Yeah, they do um, get banished. So the rest of the group continue walking and then we get the classic. And again, this is a classic, but I almost feel like in the Blair Witch Project, when they arrive back at their camp after they've been walking for hours and it, we understand their absolute frustration and desperation. We understand that. This kind of just seems thrown in there to, as if to go, oh, look, they've been walking for ages and they've walked around in a circle. Silly them. Whereas in the Blair Witch Project, we, as an audience, we're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. They're absolutely screwed. But here they kind of just go, oh, we're back at the campsite. Ashley's foot's even worse. Let's camp out again. Why not? Yeah, I guess when you've... One of the things they did do is like, fans know what to expect now. On this occasion, so then mind putting people through the torturous, repetitive walk that just skips mm. the end. Like people know what's going to happen. Yeah, I and think they're just trying to save time in that sense. Mm. Yeah, um, and Ashley's even worse. She's uh, she's freezing cold, but she's got 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 a uh, got a fever. So you know that's the bad yeah, news. A bit of body horror going on. Like we see a foot, like a weird thing go. Bloop, yeah, like and a pulsing foot, and then a big Peter... bolt comes out of it. Peter just trying to pass it off. He's like, yeah, uh, yeah. That's all right. It looks all right. You'll be fine. I'm, um, it's fine. And yeah. Yeah. Kiss it better. <laughs> What's he saying? Thing? I think he looks a bit irritated or something, doesn't he? Like, it looks a bit oh, irritated. it looks a bit irritated. It'll be all right. Like get, some thing o- pulsing. Get, <laughs> get some ointment on it. Get some ointment on it. Ointment will work. Um, I think Lisa takes the drone up now to try and work out the location. Um, but I think she sees there's no way out of the forest. Is it around about now that it gets sort of Smashed out the sky as well, possibly. Yeah, I think he just falls yeah. right into a tree. Just falls out the sky. Just gets yeah. Spaffed into a tree, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely spaffed. Um yeah. Peter leaves to collect some firewood, but he gets um Well, you just he, he, Jonathan he Davis by... just appears on his radio, right? So he goes <laughs> 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 while they're in the figure, then he's gone. And then a tree falls on him. <laughs> Timber! <laughs> Look out below! <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a lovely extra Blair, extra Blair Witch power. Just the ability to just knock trees down. That's pretty good. Well, I guess I thought there was a lot of... thing with like when he's like, I found it under like this tree. I thought that was like, that was like one of her things. Like yeah, you know, they've always said like the Blair Witch is like like the Bermuda Triangle, like the Black Hills of the Bermuda mm. Triangle. Mm-hmm. So it's like the Blair Witch is like an element. So like she could yeah. control shit. So like, she could just like oh, I love it, zap man. a tree down and stuff. Yeah. So. Obviously, they had more money now, so they could like topple a tree on someone, which I thought was cool yeah. as shit. I feel like she's somewhere playing like one of those top-down like games where you can just like cut all the trees down, like uh, well, like Age of Empires. Age of Empires, that's what I'm thinking <laughs> of. Yeah, she can just cut all the trees down. She can see all the people camping there, and she just go, "Ah, you bloody losers!" Circle them and go time loop forever. Yeah, time loop forever. Eat like shit. she can use the time. She can put a time loop AOE on there, but as Phil says it is very Age of Empires because don't they? Doesn't Lane say at some point you've got to do what she tells you to? So if you've been selected, if she's playing Age of Empires, there, she just selects one of the guys, says Harvest Wood, he goes, Who knows? And he goes and starts like chopping it down, Erectus, and starts like chopping down the little trees straight on to Peter. Yeah, bless him. So yeah, he gets flattened. Um, I think they hear him screaming, don't they? They hear him screaming, and they go. Yeah, oh, it's not necessarily Jonathan Davis on his radio. It might <laughs> just be Peter stuck under a tree. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty similar. He's probably, um, probably leaning on the button. So then, when he's <laughs> then again, Ben, right? How would you normally say you're stuck under a tree? My voice box is stuck. I know. I'll try and do the Morse code for it. <laughs> <laughs> stuck under a bloody tree. Um. Not like after that, Lee and Talia appear. They they look like they've been at like Download Festival from like the Wednesday to the Monday, and because they look absolutely just done in, <laughs> they've been just not finished. Eaten. They're desperate not to use the toilets. Have you got a Nutrigrain? Have you got a Nutrigrain? I'm not paying ten pound for a bottle of bottle of, a box of noodles. Have you got a Nutrigrain, please? Anything, anything, please. Um, you still got any? Of... You got any? There's Malwams left. I am absolutely <laughs> gasping. I mean, it's kind of they're like it's five, been five days, maybe six. And at this point, are they? Would you be thinking this? They're still playing a game of us. They've gone around the corner, they've muddied themselves up, and they've come back, pretended they've been stuck in a time loop for five days. This is all part of their plan. I don't believe it at all. 
Fucking lame with his fake beard. Look, I see you. I see. It does look. It does I look a bit fake. You. It does look fake. It looks glued He's on. gone in the bushes. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> Just must it up a bit. Put yeah. a bit of stick in there. So I think Lane sort of says, oh, this camp's a bloody hallucination anyway. That's what I do when I, I feel like I'm too cool for a situation. I just, this is a hallucination anyway. Fuck off. See you later. Asking for Nutra grains. See you in a bit. <laughs> I'm at a party I'm not really enjoying. This is just a bloody hallucination to me. See you later. Um, so Talia, like, obviously, yeah, got any food and is around about now that Oh wait, the st- she's working out the stick figures. We've got clumps of her hair in one of the, in one of them. Yeah, um, then someone does give her some food, right? Like Lisa gives her a tube of Rolos or something. Yeah, she does get something. <laughs> she gets some Toffos. <laughs> um, Lisa and James awake at seven a.m. See that it's still dark outside. There are even bigger like stick figures at this point. Is that right? Yeah, um, the Blair Witch doesn't trick them into sleeping in this time because they've defeated her using the power of set an alarm. Yeah, so exactly. they think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be terrifying though. Waking up still dark outside. Jesus. Um, Live in Scotland, then... it's every winter. <laughs> uh, Ashley accuses Tally of crafting them. She's like, "You crafted this. I can tell. It's got your. You've just got your style. They're shit." And snaps one in half, but it immediately snaps tally in half like backwards doesn't it like feel uh, like this is like a this is like a turning point in the movie this is when escalation just begins bear in mind we already had a tree drop on someone this is where basically we are not stopping until the end at this point yeah, it's like now's the end <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> much i right, wrap it up only like i want to say 40 minutes in 45 mm. minutes in yeah. Yeah. There's still like another 35 minutes. I feel like everything's yeah. kind of been fast tracked to get us to this point. It's almost like this film doesn't really have much interest in sort of building the atmosphere or building the scares. It kind of just wants to get us to this. Now, now theme, people have started theme park dropping ride in front of other people. This is, yeah. you know, on the walkthrough ride that and now it's happened. Now you're running for the rest of the, the thing. Yeah, yeah. there's a theme park ride. You're right. So mm. here's the the haunted house. Get to the haunted house. Mm. The house of horrors. Yeah. So this is when the the unseen force begins to like lift the tent into the sky. The group gets separated. They're all running. He's only just got screaming. that tent right as well. He's like, thank <laughs> goodness, my tent. Fun- <laughs> <laughs> it's not meant to do that. <laughs> Bloody hell! Did you put all the pegs in correctly? <laughs> yeah. Did you tie Shoot. the guy like ropes? Oh. Oh yeah. Also, there's um, James's camera that he leaves outside as well, doesn't he? Does he like try and watch it back to try and see? Yeah, but the battery dies or something. I'm guessing. Oh yeah. See, that's rubbish. See, because I thought that moment was going to be like we were going to see something. It was going to go right. Let's see what happened, and it maybe would have showed us something. Not like book of shadows. It see him all dancing about naked again. Well, we could have seen anything. Paranormal activity for a minute, didn't it? It It's like, ooh, I'm still in the background. Everyone look. Yeah. And then nothing happened. No. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? Mm. Um, Ashley climbs the tree, recovers the drone, but she falls out, or does she get pushed? Just out? gets wazzed yeah, out pushed. of the tree. Yeah. You see a big hand. Uh, <laughs> squisher. Um, Monty Python. She gets dragged away. Starts to rain. Bloody hell. Um, and this is yeah. So this sort of final 30 minutes is like the final five minutes of Blair Witch Project like just extended I guess isn't it yeah. um, and it's, so it's, they stumble across the house and so this it says here Rustin Parr's house it's supposed to be yeah, Rustin Parr's house originally true, isn't it same house it was like they address it in the first one like they say Rustin Parr's house burned down like in the mm. beginning when they've been the, speaking to that dude in the town so like mm. when they find the house at the end people should be like yeah, what? But the house burned down. Mm. It's, it's obviously Rustin Parr's house because all like kids' fingerprints everywhere. Yeah, but yeah, no one seems to acknowledge that. No, <laughs> no. It's a shit so they, it's a sh- they explicitly say this is Rustin Parr's house in this one. Yeah, yeah. but I've got a big wooden sign out the front like he's Winnie <laughs> the Pooh. Rustin Parr <laughs> lives here. It's a shit hole in there, though, isn't it? I mean, I, I couldn't. Oh, it's an absolute fits. orgy of building code <laughs> violations, Ben. <laughs> I couldn't imagine being stuck in there for like what however many years has been. Poor Heather. Um, yeah. So he's like, 
I recognize those screams from when I was three years old and my sister Heather used to scream all the time. She's always screaming in pain and terror. You just seen the Blair Witch movie, man. Yeah. yeah. What he sounds like now. He's done it too much. He's been doing the forecast. He's been doing the restoration. He's been absolutely those screams are just inside his head forever now. Um, so he goes in and yeah, so basically it's like there's a figure there that he kind of thinks is Heather, keeps appearing around the corner. Um and he's kind of chasing after her. That's right, isn't it? There was a couple yeah. of there are a couple of like shots. I think if you pause at this moment, you would see someone, I guess, who's kind of dressed like her. I, I was I was doing some doing some research into this particular se- sequence. Isn't and it apparently... just the beginning? It's like the YouTube video. Yeah, it is almost yeah. exactly the YouTube yeah, video exactly that they the got in their time loop in it once again. Mm. So I guess it's supposed to suggest that the Blair Witch got the tape at the end, went back in time. And, and found it so they could come and find and f- it and put it there so they could find it yeah so is that what you think like like randomly like the room just turns white <laughs> yeah so like what like, with, back in time type thing yeah so i think is that supposed to be what it represents like the bright lights outside the outside the room is that what we kind of mean yeah like mm-hmm. randomly the room just turns white for like a minute yeah. and then yeah it goes away mm. yeah Rustin Parr's house uses the same technology as like Bill and Ted's phone box. It could, yeah. <laughs> it, it could be used to travel through time. It's like, <laughs> like what is that? Is that like just time speeding up? So like that was the day just gone. Like yeah, <laughs> what else the could sun it be? just bombing <laughs> past. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That that to be fair, it was either that or like a spaceship. <laughs> and <laughs> but he actually went to space. <laughs> They actually went to Blair space. This, space. Is it. this is yeah. Blair Witch Six. It's a Thor or a space adventure. This just happens in the house. The Blair Witch is having a game of Jumanji. That's why it's ended up in the jungle in the first place. Yeah. More crossovers, like... Ben. <laughs> More crossovers, please. I guess it. Yeah, it was supposed to be. This is the thing, because even if it was daylight, it was almost too bright to be daylight. It was very much yeah, like, like pure white, wasn't it? Pure it's white. It was like lights, wasn't it? So like some kind of supernatural hue that is a representation of the Blair Witch using her powers? I don't know. It's Doing some of... magic. I think you're right. I think ultimately you've nailed it in that this whole piece is pushing into a time loop. So what we're seeing with this is the effect whereby we've been able to... These people have seen the video that they are now shooting. Yeah. I kind of like it, though, because I feel like Again, it's that fear of the unknown. It's the fear we don't have a character like Talia in this scene telling us exactly what everything is supposed to be. This is a time loop. See that light then? That was this. I'm glad we don't have that. Everything is like what the fuck. We're kind of along for the ride with the characters, kind of just terrified. And uh as soon as the Blair Witch starts turning up as well, that's even worse. And it is it is very Resident Evil 7, this sequence, isn't it? Where um... I was thinking Wreck. It looked like the thing. Wreck. Yeah. yeah, with the big old gangly, mm-hmm. gangly thing. Yeah, very Wreck. Because Blair Witch very... has famously got big old long arms, right? From being wrongans in the past. Say any are Blair Witch. All these bloody stones. Thing. Yeah, all these in stones. Fact, yeah. Your arms get real long. Yeah. Like, like, I kind of like it. I, I, I also like, I'm disappointed. You know, you are a bit disappointed. Like, well, we've finally seen something of what the Blair Witch is supposed to look like after all these years, but I don't know. I don't know what could have possibly lived up to. I think that's a really from... big challenge, right? Because yeah, you you've learned expectations. Yeah, that. you've learned it's like if you ever saw what Steve Priestley from movies, games, and videos looks like, you'd be very disappointed. That's a niche <laughs> reference by even my standards. Wow. I mean, um, I just... there's no fur. There's no fur. No, I oh, wanted to see. No I wanted fur. to see the hairy arms they could have hired. They could, they could have hired Robin Williams, who's got very famously very hairy arms, and got him involved <laughs> running through the house. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that would have been creepier because I feel like almost what we get to see is a bit cliche. And again, I think I just think around about these times with this wreck, Resident Evil Seven is a very specific look of a of a creepy found footage like lady creature, <laughs> lady creature. I mean, funny bit where they're going into the house and she's outside. She's like, ah, and then hides behind a tree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Blair Witch. What are you afraid of? What are you? Yeah. Hiding? Exactly, and w- exactly, it's uh, it's pretty mad. But I'd have yeah, been almost like... tempted to do something quite abstract with it. Either have a a shadow or a shape, or a person that we know, and you know, to give implication that it can look like other people, like you know, a person that we know is dead, or 
if you could have actually got the actor that played Heather to be in it for just a minute, whack her in the corner, like dirty her up and stuff. But um, or you know, mm. have the have the lady that pointed out the American flag in the yeah, in the original, <laughs> whack her in. I like I like the idea that this could potentially be happening at the same time as the ending of the Blair Witch Project, like there's some sort of crossover of time in a way. Yeah, because when outside quite the interesting. house, you see someone walk by with a light, right? So yeah. It is Lisa, I think, in this one, but it could be mm. Heather. He thinks it's Heather, so that's why he was running in. Yeah, I think that's in, I think that's really interesting. Um, yeah, but how does Lisa of... end up now in a tunnel, digging out of Shawshank Prison? Because Lane grabs her. Lane's got a big old big. He turns old beard into now. Rustin Park for like a hot minute, doesn't he? He's like Rustin yeah. Park, right? I've been here forever, mate. <laughs> I've been here for ages. Get in. Get down that hatch. Get down the hatch from Get Evil in the Dead. Basement. Get in the basement. And that's when she, yeah, digs her way out from that, making sure that she's always got the camera just ahead of her enough to capture it perfectly. That's uh, really cool, though. Like, I think, you know, you talk about an individual. That's like a super mm. cool first person shot. And the tension is great there with like the light behind her. And she's shoving this camera along and crawling up there. That is good. Yeah, good if you got claustrophobia, I guess, because like proper narrow in there. So she's like, <clears throat> yeah, gave me like you know, obviously it's the it's the underground and the tightness of it. Like it gives you like the descent vibes. You know, it's so oppressive under like underground is I would say top three bad places you can be. Underground is beaten only by the sea and space for places that are fucked to end up mm. being stuck. Hell um. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think this is a really effective scene in terms of an individual thing because it doesn't necessarily pay off and she doesn't get a Blair Witch coming up behind her and going boogie boogie, but it does give you that tension that something is behind her. She is trying to get out of it quickly in a really difficult situation where it's hard to move. Mm. And I like Lane running around as well. Madman Lane all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I like there's a bit where she hears some sounds and she kind of looks down, looks back the way she came into the darkness and you don't see anything like that's pretty scary like that. I think that would be. Uh, yeah, that'd be what drives me over the edge. Um, but yeah, she manages to get out of the tunnel, doesn't she? I think she's moving some furniture in the way of the door and that's when she climbs main... back into the thing and then it starts collapsing underneath her. Like literally the whole place is coming apart. Right. Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, she she stabs Lane, doesn't she, in the old in the neck? The neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, on accident, like coming around the corner, he comes up. The bloody hell! Got him. <laughs> Could have been anyone. Could have been anyone. Could have been one of your mates. Dead. Um, and then yeah, they they eventually end up in the attic, don't they? And this is when they see the lights. Um, and this is when like so the Blair Witch basically chases her up the stairs, right? And that's when um, we get the best the best look at the Blair Witch as well in this particular scene as well, and that when we see her. Yeah, I'd, and then she bumps I'd, I'd build into James big, in the attic. Build a bigger house, I suppose, the Blair Witch. Bloody hell, the ducking under everything, every, every door frame. Horrific. Like banging your head at least three or four times a day. Um, yeah. But he kill less he... kids, Rustin Parr. Put a bloody extension in. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Rustin. Put the basements for me. <laughs> Means so... If you're the Blair Witch, you can do time limps, loops. Infinite Bank Holiday Mondays to do that, to get that place looking spick and span. <laughs> Infinite bank on Lane Mondays, which you got more hours in the day. Remember, that's that's a fact. Also, like the stuff to to do with them standing in the corner and not looking, like they, they this is a new take on it, I guess, because it was always supposed to just be that was what Rustin Parr did, wouldn't it? When he killed the kids. yeah, he says you can't take the eyes looking on him, so you make one look in the corner while he kills the other one. Don't look at me while I do a murder, because I'll do it wrong. <laughs> I'll feel guilty. It's... Stop looking all the guilty. time, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you would. You wouldn't let. Him... Look away. No, I won't. I won't. Oh, but he shan't. I can't do a murder then. Oh, well, there we I mean, go. I do that when I just cross the road on a zebra cross and I look him right in the eye. <laughs> you put <laughs> me over on a zebra cross and we haunt your dreams forever, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is where the witch obviously uses the 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 voice trick. Uh, it's really good at impressions. Because um, in order to get in order to get James, she says something as as Heather. What did she say? Yeah, I don't think you hear it. Like he's just no. like Heather, is that you? Heather, is that he you? She said, "You little three-year-old prick." I'm off to the woods because I'm sick of the sight of you. And he goes, "Heather," he's yeah, like, then... "James, if you look now, I'll tell you where I put my Easter eggs." What? 
<laughs> if you look now, the thirty-year-old Easter eggs. Um, um, I feel this. Right. I find uh, when you talk about frustrations with the movie, this is the one I, that kind of got me because it feels like Lisa, in particular, having seen James get bashed by the Blair Witch, she gets it. Like s- someone has taught her the rules of this mm. game. She's got the mechanics of this bit. It's like, oh, okay, I can't look at the Blair Witch, but I have a reverse angle camera here, so I can use the screen of the I would camera. Trust that. To Medusa, this and I can get out, but then she. Gets... I wouldn't trust it. Would you trust she it? Gets I'd like, I off immediately. Yeah. Beatrice does stab- his old um, Heather thing, doesn't he? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Is it James? James, yeah. is that um, you? Yeah, Turn around and... if you don't think I'm the Blair Witch. What? <laughs> Got him. <laughs> <laughs> but she's only um, just learned the rules. I, I, I. What I wanted from this was some kind of different way for it to be tricked not the exact same way that james had been tricked tricked the same 30 way seconds but also, earlier it's almost the exact same ending as the original as well just the camera collapse into the ground and that's it there's no callbacks yay yeah well i don't know it's just i don't know i feel then like... again i suppose how else would you have done it would you have felt less cheated if she had used the camera to navigate her way out of the house than a tree had dropped on her because I don't think this is the type yeah, of film funny, ever actually, where it's yeah. going to be like, and she escaped and was fine. Well, they yeah. had all the money in the world. They could have done some crazy shit. It's like, mm. like when she's like doing that thing with the camera, like the bridge comes from behind, pulls her around, and the, the camera goes flying back with her. Mm. Yeah. Could have done something a bit more imaginative. Could have done tons. Yeah. Or yeah. Do, yeah, well, maybe that would have been it. Find a way to navigate from looking at the witch that gets caught, but then gets caught by like a natural hazard of the woods, fall and bang your head and drown in an inch of water. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would have been good, wouldn't it? Thematic. Uh, and there we go. And that's the drone the comes back down, bashes her on the head. <laughs> the drone <laughs> in a time loop drone. has just been knocked out of that tree, goes, gets a propeller stuck in a crust. <laughs> propeller in the crust. Classic. Um, okay, so that's the end. That's Blair Witch 2016. Andy, have you got any name game to potentially round us off? Yeah, I can probably manage a couple of you not, you're not going to Blair prepared? Witch name games. Are you going to do them off the top of the dome? Okay, yeah. maybe we should explain to Phil how this works. Basically, we're going to give you a synopsis for a film that sounds very similar to Blair Witch, but isn't Blair Witch. It's going to rhyme with Blair Witch, though. Um, it's a pretty straightforward game, but, but it's given us hours of fun over the years, isn't it, Andy? It has. Um, What's the synopsis of the film, Ben? It is. After discovering a video showing what he believes to be his sister, Heather, James and a group of friends head to the forest, believed to be inhabited by the Blair Witch. Okay. Uh, In this film, during World War II, having found some old video cassettes of Madonna with the big boobies, a member of Hitler's SS harasses a... uh, uh, a cafe owner. <laughs> Madonna. I would say big... I, I would say the rhyme in this one is nominal. Wait, explain again. Say it again. <laughs> so in World in World War Two Europe, having found a video of Madonna with the big boobies that he wishes to claim, a member of Hitler's SS harasses a local cafe owner. Isn't this something to do with Allo Allo? It's exactly to do with the life. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Bear in mind, this is my first one. This is your first. I I've got to spend right. just one, we'll one, one minute. Like Blackadder. Then sounds like Faulty Towers. That sounds like a so It sounds a bit like Blair Witch nominally, if you mumble. I want to spend one minute in your brain. Just <laughs> one it minute. Of, it is, of course. Hair flicks. <laughs> but is, that's the man from the SS who's looking for that painting. I mean, wow. What 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 a deep cut. You said earlier you dropped a deep cut in there, but uh yeah. <laughs> I reckon hair flick is less of a deep cut than Steve <laughs> Priestley. <laughs> yeah, probably. Have you okay. got one, Ben? Yeah, why not? Um so after discovering a video, what he believes to be his vanished sister Heather and a group of friends head to the forest to be inhabited by a witch who's actually pretty well-rounded with her judgments. Quite impartial, unbiased, you would say. 
Is it the fair witch? Oh, she's fair. She's absolutely fair. The fair witch. The fair witch. See, th- that's that's the way. This is the way name game usually goes. I do the most simple, ridiculous ones, and Andy will drop something like an oh. "allo allo" reference. Strap I, in I, though, Ben and Phil, because this one gets a tiny bit political. Years <laughs> after the World War II, oh one, no, <laughs> another uh, young man finds some videos. This time. Allegedly of Saddam Hussein having some weapons of mass destruction, which he uses as justification for starting a war. <laughs> Tony Blair witch. Tony Blair witch. Very good. <laughs> Tony Blair witch. I love it. Okay. Um, after discovering a video showing what he believes to be his vanished sister Heather, he watches it back and realizes it's actually just a really awfully taped version of the movie The Exorcist. And the main star is the titular witch in this. <laughs> Have you got it? I can't think of a name now. My brain is rotted. Regan. Regan McNeil herself. Linda Blair. Linda Blair. <laughs> Linda Blair Witch. Linda Blair Witch. I noticed we're not really... Also, name game. It won't always be a rhyme. It will sometimes just be a... Why could you describe <laughs> a that? A thematic link. A thematic link. There we go. Any more, Andy? A low, a low to Linda Blair by a Tony Blair. Yeah. Well, okay. as we're a hor- as we're a horror hang- as we're a horror podcast, I feel like the Linda Blair thing makes total sense. But hello, hello, maybe there's like some sort of horror. Are horror you connection saying then that there are somewhere? any greater horrors than those of real life war? I'm not. I'm not. Sorry. Yeah, don't I deny apologize. that those things are horrible. <laughs> Support our troops, Ben. Jeez. Um... <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay. Right, go how on. about this one then? Um... A couple, uh, a couple of guys, they find some videos uh, in the in the woods one day, and they show you that in fact, uh, if someone has chopped a load of your barnet off to put it into dollies, you can sew it back in if you're very careful and know a special technique to do so. Blair stitch, spray. <laughs> so the hair stitch is what I was after there. Between the hair you. stitch, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Right, got one more, and then we'll put Phil out of his misery um, and end and end this game there. After discovering a video showing what he believes to be his vanished sister Heather, James and a group of friends head to the forest where the Blair Witch is just grassing everybody up, telling everybody the deepest, darkest Blair secrets snitch. and the worst things they've ever done. The Blair, the Blair snitch. snitch is correct. Yeah, look at that. Okay, See? I a wrestler discovers a bunch of tapes under the wrestling ring believed to be his long-lost sister. What does he say when he finds them? Woo! <laughs> the oh, Rick yes. Blair Witch. Oh, Very good. I, you lost me until that until that wonderful impression. The Rick Flair Witch. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Just that playing. <laughs> blaring. Literally Blair, blaring. The Blair Witch in the forest. That's the sound they hear. What's that noise in the forest? <laughs> the, imagine that terrifying Blair Witch just in one of Rick Flair's lovely... Um, entrance robes. Very oh nice. yes. Okay. Are we? Are we I reckon done? it's time to rate the movie, Ben. Okay. Rate the movie A to F. Pluses and minuses are allowed. Phil, would you like to go first? Uh, I give her a good C. Straight, straight down the middle C. Plus, actually. C plus. Okay. Would you like to elaborate on that? What, 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 what would you yeah. say your reason? So, are? in terms of, I, there was a lot of on-the-nose throwbacks that I didn't care for at all. Mm. And showing the witch, I know it was essential, it had to, given the mm. era it was made in, but I there was never going to be a way that they could make her scarier than what people thought the witch was when they first saw the original. But on the plus side, I did like the fact that they introduced more characters, so it wasn't just like three people lost in the woods, there was a bit more of a dynamic between the group of Lane and Tally and the other group, so that was cool. And um, yeah, that tent scene was awesome, like the equivalent of the tape, tent shake, which is the tent fly up in the air scene. I really enjoyed that in that entire sequence. And mm-hmm. just the balls to the wall nature of that final half of the film, or like the final third, the final mm-hmm. half. It makes up yeah. for that really bumpy opening the, well, yeah, the first 20 minutes are a bit rough. But mm. yeah, once you get to that 10 scene, whoo, it's just kick back, have fun, and it's just a thrill ride. 
Mm. Yeah, I think I kind of agree. I was thinking C plus as well. I don't like absolutely. I think it is a bit of a struggle before we get to that bit where it turns into a a theme park ride, as we said. I feel like it's probably got to be one of the franchises where it's just the most difficult to make a new entry into because the first one was just of its time. And I feel like trying to recreate that is bad. And also stepping too far away from that is also not great. So I feel like whoever's going to make a new installment of, of a Blair Witch movie is going to have the cards stack, stacked against them. But the more, I, as I said, this is maybe the third or fourth time I've seen this, and I feel like that that final third, the, 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 that final act, I do like it, and I do the fact do like the fact that there's a lot of like weird stuff happening that can't really be explained, unless of course we we ask the filmmaker directly. Was it that bloody aliens or what? What was it? Was it just someone shining a shining a lamp in there? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I think just a C plus. It's 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 all right, isn't it? I think it was the jump scare stuff that annoyed me the first time I watched it. I think because I watched it in a cinema, I felt like the jump scares didn't really have a place in that film because it was found footage it just felt like the extra sound design was just shaped to just make you jump rather than actual genuine scare so that was annoying andy what are you thinking i'm gonna go maybe a little bit harsher than you two but not by much not by much at all i'm gonna go for a c um for many of the same reasons that you both that you both mentioned i think that it is such a phenomenally difficult film for all of those reasons we discussed to truly continue in the way that they had i think as we discussed i think it would be something that probably would benefit from just leaning into it as a piece of fiction and embracing the the legends and the stories of the past and telling them as a piece of fiction as a ghost story as a legend uh, and maybe abandoning some of the found footage elements of it and just shoot it as a as a straight film that in itself might empower some of these things where you're leaning into that, that you don't need to lean into that exposition. You want to build that legend and then let the stuff that's meant to appear in real life feed off that rather than, um, you know, compete with it a little bit. Um, but there are some great bits of filmmaking technique in there. There is some real love for the genre in it. And I do think that, those little those roller coaster ride moments, you know, the the snapping of the twigs and that that reflecting on a person, that really frenetic sort of chase through the house captures that being chased up the stairs by an unseen demon at the end of uh at the end of your the day when you're a kid kind of feeling. So there's there's some great moments there, but I think it just perhaps falls under the weight of expectation a little bit. And unfortunately, a bit like the reviewers, not angry about it. But I can, you know, look at it in comparison to the the high heights of the original and see that as an imitation, it is pale when it is in the shadow of that there. But there are still things to celebrate. And I think if you're one of those fans that isn't offended that someone else attempted to do it, if you are just really into the law, there is a great richness for you to get mm. out of it. But um, if I'm going to sit down and watch one of them again, it would always be the original that I'd go back to because it's still a phenomenal piece of film. And I think if you if you enjoy the lore, there are tons of books out there, loads and loads of extra footage, and of course, the Blu-ray with the all the deleted scenes uh, and the feature-length documentary. You're going to get absolutely the most Blair tiny. Witch that ever Blair Witched. Exactly. There you go. You see, that's the perfect <laughs> segue into that's exactly what you should be doing if this has left you this episode with any hunger for any Blair Witch content. Some coming your Hell way very yes. soon. Absolutely. Uh, on that note, Phil, where can our listeners keep up to date with you and anything else you're working on online? Uh, yeah, you can follow me on the Twitter, well, don't we, X, sorry, at Phil underscore Escott. <laughs> and follow me on Letterboxd as well, because I spend more time on there than anywhere else. Yes, absolutely. I'll be doing that. I have done that. Um, brilliant. So um, thanks, everybody, for listening. If you enjoyed the show, become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash horror hangout. Thanks to our patrons over there. Thanks to Taj Easton for our theme music. Thanks to Acast for hosting the show. Please consider giving us a rating or review. We're on Twitter, X, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Just search Horror Hangout Podcast. You, will, you shall find us. Next week, we are covering Wishmaster with special guest Dan Taylor. Looking forward to it.
Yeah, thank you so much, Phil. And uh, for everybody else, you find yourselves in the woods. Keep a neutral grain on you, why don't you? And put loads of extra tent pegs in that tent because you never know when it's going to get slurped off into the sky. Thanks for joining us, Phil. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye now.